Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So Christmas has passed, but there was a ton of different gifts that developers gave the PlayStation scene over the holidays. Today, what I decided to do was to wrap all of those up into one condensed video and hopefully you'll find something in there that you haven't seen yet. Let's just go ahead and let's jump straight into it. So let's kick things off right here with the PlayStation Vita. And there was a release by The Flow, which was a WebKit Plus kernel exploit chain for all PS Vita firmwares, including the recently released 3.74. Now, what is significant about this is, is that before we had to use a PC in order to exploit PlayStation Vita hardware. Now we can do everything just simply through the web. And so here is obviously the initial commit and what we've seen has come out since then is an actual site that you can go to over here on deploy.psp2.dev. Now, if you go to this website on your PlayStation Vita, then you would have the option to install Hinkaku as well as Vita Deploy. So that was another very nice and unexpected Christmas present. Next up, we had the official release of Gold Hen version 2.3. Now, version 2.3 was significant mainly because it included plug-in support. So with added plugin support, a developer could write an application and it would hook right in to Gold Hen. Now also included in this release was added frames per second counter, as well as the ability to turn on the title ID label, as well as the version number. There was MC4 cheat format support, added scan lines overlay if you want to get that retro feel in your PlayStation 4 game or application. Finally, there was added internal package installation support. Now, there was a ton of things that was included in 2.3, and if you want a complete rundown on every single feature as well as a demonstration on how to use it, I would highly recommend and would love it if you went over and you watched my video on it right over here on YouTube. Then we got another Christmas present from Lightning Mods, and it was a tool that was in beta or pre-release called Items Flow. So Items Flow is a PS4 game manager and home menu alternative. Now again, it says right here that this was made using open source tools and if we scroll down into the GitHub repository here, there is all kinds of different settings and configuration and theme support that you can take advantage of right now. Now again, just like with the Gold Hen 2.3, I also released a video on items flow and I really walk you through using it from absolute scratch to setting it up the way at least I set up mine. So if you would like a video that goes a little bit more in depth on items flow, I would love it if you checked mine out. Next up, a bit of PlayStation 5 Christmas presents. It was obviously this one right here, which was a PlayStation 5 partition mount, which really resulted in the first PS5 custom theme. So you can see this current theme that they created right here. There's also a couple of different themes that it looks like that they're going to be working on. And one of them was going to be Elden Ring. I've also seen God of War, Ragnarok. Now, if you did want to go ahead and check this out, obviously there is a mega.nz folder, which we'll talk about just in a minute, that you can go to and you can get the required files. But this is based off of the source code from John Tornblum. Now, one thing to note about using this custom theme is, is that you will need to be using John Tornblum's PS5 Elf Loader. And you would need that 
in order to load the payload that is listed right here. Now, this is PS5 PM underscore 1.1.elf. Now, I have seen that this is for 3.20 yet I haven't confirmed that yet, as well as there is another folder here that's called Single Partition Mount, which has things such as pre-install, which will give you read-write access to the System EX folder, the System folder, and then the Update folder. So really depending on which partition you wanted to mount, you can just pick that. Going back to the theme itself, you can see that there is a please read me right here. The theme file can be directly overridden into the corresponding directory in order to take effect. And again, it can only be used via the bd-jb elf loader. Now, he did say in here that if you delete and replace these PS5 files at wills, it can cause the PS5 to be completely bricked. Now, I have heard that you would be able to restore your PlayStation 5's firmware in order to get this back working again, but again, I can't confirm it myself. And not only did we get this new PS5 custom theme, but also the ability to enable a browser permanently. The reason that this is different than how we've done it before is, is that before we had to do some manual modification of the app.db, whereas with this, it's just simply dragging and dropping some files over to the system. And one thing that I will say before leaving this section is, is that I was trying in order to get access to the read write on some of these partitions listed right here. And so far, I've been unable to. Now, I've heard that you use John Tornblom's BD-JB ISO file, burn that to a disk, and then you would come in here and you would run the appropriate payload right here for your system. Then you would need to use the WebKit exploit and then send over the FTP payload. I, on a 3.20 system, have yet to get this to work. So if you have been able to get this to work, then please let me know. And then there was a Christmas present over here from the PlayStation 3 emulation scene and what they said was was that our PCS3 can now run all released PlayStation 3 games. So if we go over to their site and it says that the PlayStation 3 emulator has been making strides for many years now, allowing PC owners to enjoy games that are still exclusive to the Sony console. Yesterday, the developer confirmed a, another extremely important milestone has been reached, and that is that the emulator is now capable of running every PlayStation 3 game. Now, it says, while that doesn't mean that every game's in a playable state, it is undeniable that this is a great milestone that bodes well for the entire PS library to eventually become playable on PC. So, well done to that team. I could not be happier for you. And then in some PlayStation 4 news, we got this tweet right here. It said, Merry Christmas and a link to a GitHub repo. If you go to that repo, then what you will find is, is that this is the PS4 CFW toolkit. And please don't think that that is custom firmware as we know custom firmware on the Vita and PS3, for example. This basically is a toolkit that will allow you to decrypt and encrypt various PlayStation 4 firmware files. So it says CFW in quotation marks here, but it says with the proper keys, all of which can be obtained from your console, you can decrypt and properly encrypt the following binary images. And basically what this is going to do for the end user is, is that hopefully at somewhere in the future, we would be able to use this to potentially create custom firmware for the PlayStation 4. Right now, obviously, you know that we don't have that ability. The only thing that we can do is to run the exploit each and every time. But if we were able to decrypt, add the modifications that we needed, and then 
re-encrypt it and sign it, well, we could or we might could be able to run an installer just like we run an installer on like the PlayStation 3, for example, which gets us the custom firmware. And then next up, there was a gigantic leak, and this was for Horizon Forbidden West. So it says a complete non-public internal build with complete debug enabled has been leaked publicly. And well, this has hit a number of different news outlets, such as this one right here. And it says on a popular platform aimed at PlayStation users, a file was uploaded on the 28th of December marked test game. It was shortly after that action was taken that users noticed that it wasn't just any game, but a Horizon Forbidden West Alpha product that boosted a full unlockable debug menu. Since that's the last item on the list of Christmas presents, I thought we would give it a spin. Okay, here it is. Test game. Let's go. Okay, <laughs> very cool. Look at all of this stuff. Uh, so it looks like up at the top, and it should show in green, you should see continue, normal start, first start. And here is where you can jump around, I believe, to any of these places within the game. Options that are currently enabled here. So enable host integration, wait on crash. Looks like you can do no warning boxes, autopilot, unlock all quest categories. There is also a couple of other things such as disable GPU MIP stats and then presets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just come in here and I'm going to pick a level. Here we go. And it is, it is loading up a specific part of the game. Okay, there we go. Main quest, the sea at hands. Okay, so I just pressed skip and yes, it really did just skip kind of just like that. So it does say right here, I completed the main quest. I got 10,000 XP there. And I have not made it to this part of the game, so I'm not sure if those buildings are supposed to look like that or not, to be quite honest with you. I may have to try another part of the game. Okay, so I don't know what just happened, but it did say that you've completed the quest, and it does say, please fill out the questionnaire about it on your PC. So I'm gonna hit back here and see if that gets me back into the game. And it does. And one thing that I know that is an option is that you can hold down the L1, L2, R1, R2, and then the L3 and R3 buttons together to unlock this debug menu, which is what you see right there. So there is God mode, which you can turn that on or off. You can also go into the infinite ammo and turn that on or off. There is all kinds of things like switch character. So we just switched a character, but I do not believe there was another character there. So let's hit OK there. And <laughs> so again, this is a very early alpha build. Okay, so we'll come in here and we will we'll give a, another one of these a shot. We will scroll down and just pick another random one. And so anyway, it's really great that these things kind of come out because people that are archiving all of these for, you know, demonstration purposes or just to learn more about game development, now they get a little bit of an inside view of kind of what's going on with a really big game such as this. Okay, so now I'm going to try to pull that debug menu up again and let's see what else is in here. So I tried the Switch character, which I believe is what eventually made that one quit. So there is also telemetry stats. It does say that that is not ready. There is show info. So it looks like there is some information that is now down at the very bottom of the screen. 
Let's just see what else is in here. Move straight to center of the screen, turned on. Debug camera. Let's see. Oh, there we go. There is a nice little way that you can move and navigate around in order to show the character and some of this other stuff. That's pretty neat. Okay, well, anyway, that is going to do it for this one. I hope you all had a Merry Christmas. This was just a couple of the things that I saw that was still out there that had been given to us from other developers in the homebrew scene. So if you haven't already, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next one. Michael, Ow.